Hey guys, why don't you climb on board and hitch up with me and old Sam the Silver Car as we go through Ankrum, Cooks, and Copaig on today's episode of Lost Rail Beds. Let's go. Well, it's a beautiful day. Got some nice water drops on the branches. We're here in Ankrum, Simons Road Crossing, right where we left off on our last little episode. Here's the Rhinebeck and Connecticut Railroad Corridor, heading northeast toward Copaic. Our next public spot to view will be on Four Corners Road. Let's take a little jaunt and see what we can find, shall we? This, folks, is Wiltsey Bridge Road area. We're actually standing on Four Corners Road. Here's how we got here. If you're down in the village of Ankrum, you take County Route 7 north toward Copic. Take your right on Simons, follow down Simons to the Simons Road crossing area that we shot earlier, and continue on down Simons till you hit Wiltsey Bridge. Take a quick left and a quick left onto Four Corners, and that brings us here. Right on back to old man Adams. Doesn't want us on the rail bed, but this is it. The next chance you've got to stop your car, get out and stretch your legs, and take a gander down the beautiful Rhinebeck and Connecticut Railroad corridor. We're currently looking southwest back toward, well, back towards Rhinecliff, the origin. And if we spin around here and we cross Four Corners Road and we go to the east side of the road, we've got the corridor continuing beautiful spot to get out stretch your legs park your car on the side of the road and take a look at the corridor where it crosses four corners road here in between Ankrum and Copake. all right well the next public spot here is on Wiltsey Bridge so from that four corners road crossing backtrack back down four corners to Wiltsey Bridge take a left and continue out Wiltsey Bridge, and you'll see it. We're walking south westerly down the rail corridor here at Wiltsey Bridge Road, uh, which is, if you're keeping track, oh. We got some nicely hand laid stone wall right here. Now, that's right here. They wouldn't have just done that for any old reason. I suppose this may have been the structure. Or was it just a retainer? Right here, it goes all the way out to there, to the main road, to Wiltsey Bridge Road. We'll have to look into that. That was placed there by the hands of man. Anyway, we are here. Let's go down a little ways. We already found out about 20 feet in. Maybe we'll find something else. You never know what you'll find back here. Huh? Looks like it continues here. Yeah, that's a stone wall. It's not a foundation. I'm gonna say it's not a foundation. Of course, I don't know. You don't know. We didn't build it. But, could be just pushed up rubble. Uh, definitely placed there for a reason. Quite possibly a retaining wall of sorts to uh, Hold back the rail bed. Anyway, we're fortunate enough to be able to walk down this bed a little ways here. Haven't heard any gunshots yet. 
And again, we're here pretty much in between Ankrum and Copaic, heading towards Copaic um, in our travels. Right now we're heading back towards Ankrum if you must. Um, yeah, see the old Ryan Beck and Connecticut corridor. I'll stop right here, turn around and we'll go back the other way. What say you? Now we're coming out of the rail bed there. That's the uh, stone wall there. And we'll pick up back here at Wiltsy Bridge Road, cross Wiltsy Bridge. And it appears as though, yes, we're now on the east side of Wiltsy Bridge. And we do have some remnants here of something, a structure of sorts. Um, this, uh, this, the corridor continues east toward Copake. Just to give you a little guide reference here, we're on Wiltsy Bridge. If you see this uh, electrical station right here, that's where we're at. You'll also see this uh, Long Lake Homeowners Association sign here. That's where we're at. And we'll take a peek at the remnants, remains of this structure here. See if we can get some clues. I see concrete. Looks like piers. I see stone I see concrete I see some metal I see stuff <laughs> what are you seeing if you see anything that I don't see let me know some stone incorporated there this foundation continues on over <coughs> Excuse me, I just did notice something over here. Wow, what do we got? Right here. It is. Wow. The big uh, round stone laid by the hands of man structure right here on the side of Wiltsey Bridge Road, right at the railroad crossing. Hmm. That's a modern day cut off telephone pole right there. But this goes down. I wonder if it was a well of some sorts. Could very well be. It could be farm related too. Let's uh, I'm going to turn you off for a second here and do a little snooping around, see what we can find. I'll get back. Well, I thought I'd turn you back on here and uh, I see some stuff, so I thought we'd go find it together. Now, break through here. <laughs> There's definitely a building. You got an old can there. We got an old porcelain looking sink we got some clay tiles we got some metal we got some fencing we've got a bunch of old uh, looks like roof shingles here on a collapsed building and there is the back wall of it it's all concrete so it's you know it's it's old it's remnants it's ruins it's relics I see some brick, I see some metal. Uh, I might venture to say, this could have been a, there wasn't a station here, was there? We'll have to look into it. This has all the makings of that. Got some building materials. Boy, it's just a big drop off over there. And, uh, let's see. Maybe we'll get lucky here. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I 
don't see anything telling me what this was other than it was something farm related or railroad related i'm going to lean towards railroad related because it is right here at the crossing and i'm going to say that big round um stone uh, dare i say well looking thing out front this could have been a water tower here for uh taking on water we'll have to look into that nonetheless cool interesting now i'm going to turn you off so i can use two hands to get out of here <laughs> i know it's a bed it's a railroad bed we are here we continued out wiltsey bridge road from that last stop we had and we went all the way out wiltsey bridge we passed empire road on our left and just past 100 feet past we come upon the bed again and it crosses right here. Now, ah, look at those mountains. That there is, uh, that's the corner of New York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts you're looking at right there. Those mountains, foothills to the Berkshires. So uh, here's the bed, continues on out parallels right here along this field and it keeps going east up towards Copic. let's go check out our next spot so what you want to do from there is you uh, go on out Wiltsey Bridge you hit that Empire Road and you uh, saw the last crossing there on Wiltsey Bridge and it's about as close as we can get but that beautiful nice straight line out there that is the corridor uh paralleling empire road heading toward copake the uh nice farmer across the road told me i could stand here and shoot it if i wanted to but don't walk out there so we take what we can get right empire road just before copake let's keep going well you want to look for the powerade bottle here at your next stop that's a small culvert, modern day, underneath Empire Road. Empire Road, just before the intersection of Trout Brook. And the reason I stopped is because I saw this right alongside the road where the bed runs. It's obviously concrete. It's obviously way silted over. And that of course is the bed. That old culvert ran underneath the bed. This is so heavily vegetated. I can't even get any further than that. But I thought I'd show you that, kids. There it is. Let's walk on up to the intersection of Trout Brook and Empire. We'll see what we can find. Look for that Powerade bottle. It'll be there. All right, here we are at Trout Brook and Empire, east of Ankrum, before Copaic. This is the crossing right here. And I do see some modern day trash, but I do see in there a nice old piece of uh, stone. That was, I assume, a small trestle right here. Let's see if we can get in there and look. <laughs> I did it. It's uh, late winter, early spring here. Um, uh, intersection, Trout Brook and Empire. And this is about as close as I can get without going swimming. Water looks to be about five feet deep right there. Uh, but I am standing on nice stone column. There's the one in the middle of the stream. And there's the one on the other side. This was a wooden trestle crossing. I'm going to estimate it to be probably all totaled 40 feet long. Interesting tidbit. Trout Brook Empire 
Cold Peak. Well, it doesn't look like much in, on the screen, but that's an old railroad tie right there. Uh, you very rarely come upon them out here on the old beds, but that could quite possibly be from when they tore the rails up in the late 30s, possibly into the 1940. And that right there, leaning up against the tree, is an old wellhead pipe. So, where are we? We are out in Copake. And we are on the rail corridor. Just before it picks up and hits Old Route 22, which is the bypass road into Copake off of 22, uh, at the site of the station. Well, we'll get to the station in a minute. But we came in with permission from High Voltage. Our friends there, Mr. Steve, thank you very much. Steve times two, I might add, and Mr. Dave, uh, all rail enthusiasts. And they said I could walk in. Yeah, it's a chunk of iron. Oops, I pushed it in further than I wanted to. Uh, maybe I'll uh, turn you off in a bit and try to pop that out and see what that was. You know, when they ripped up the rails all across the country, not just here in the Northeast, uh, they did it and they took all the iron they could get, spikes, tie plates, switch plates, of course the rail, signs, sign posts, everything iron everything metal and it got shipped on mass overseas to unfortunately japan where it came back to us a few years later in a different form but that's another story for another day oh here we go some ballast actual ballast on the rhinebeck in connecticut still left over here in Copeak and it looks like I'm pretty much at the end of the line as far as I can go there's a posted sign in the shape and form I like to see them disheveled down in the bushes but I do see the remnants of a stone pier and I'll have you know I'm walking in barbed wire that's about ankle high and if I trip and fall I won't be a happy camper well, it's a clear example of a good washout here as we go down and down and down into the water. <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> Be a nice spot to have a little chair right here. Oh, oh look, a picnic table. Have a little chair right here. Throw a line out, dangle your feet, yeah. So, right back in Connecticut, stone, pier abutments, still here after all those years. Said it before, you'll hear it from my lips again, I just love that old stone work. I've done blue stone work for many years, by hand and with machines, and uh, I sure can appreciate it. Well, let's go over there, see if I can get a shot of the back of it. Let me turn you off. Be right back. Back a little further, there is the, there is the lead stone column, the lead stone, the first stone abutment uh, heading northeast. A train would have hit on the old trestle as it crossed. I will show you the mid trestle, the mid stonework. Bear with me. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Almost, almost almost completely washed over 
but I did just see some iron work left over that you really don't come across too often right there look at that that's a bolt a through bolt that was drilled into that piece of stone that it was torched off and that would have secured the wood to this stonework let's go look at the corner that's a corner for you and again way over there the lead one and this was the midstream now you say well it's on land why'd they build it on land well because this flooded and when this flooded I imagine the trestle did too so there's the lead there's the middle and we saw the other end and I'll try to get a shot of it from behind and see if I can get up on it and stand on it here it is right here oh beautiful drill marks look at them that's as true and square and perfect as you can get folks I know guys <clears throat> sad to say 2022 with an excavator and a hydraulic thumb and lasers they can't do work as nice as this there it is yep I'm back in Connecticut out here in Copake just before the station and it crossed and it arched over that way cool stuff huh guys all right let's go walk back and uh, venture over to the station just real quick here on my way back out I saw this which I did not see on the way in it's a wetlands reserve program conservation easement boundary yeah so human activity human activity and one other thing that we need to be cognizant of is the railroads put up fencing they loved fencing this is ours and it's not yours so when you're walking out here in the woods uh always be owie always be aware of that iron fencing stuff you can trip on i'm gonna go back to where we saw that iron piece sticking up if i can find it right here right there let me turn you off and try to pop that out we'll see what it is well i did find out what it is real quick it's a ground rod it goes way down in the ground and they use them uh when the telegraph poles were strung they used them to ground everything into the ground not unlike modern day housing and electrical systems are grounded <laughs> you're not grounded you're not dead all right let's walk on back so that bridge uh that we found was a wooden structure and it had three piers it was a three pier wooden wooden uh structured bridge on the rhinebeck in connecticut just west of just before the copake station and as we dilly dally our way on back out we'll get to the edge of the somewhat improved lawn here and we'll turn and we'll say whoops see you later rail bed again just one little quick side note this is original foundation that is still here from when this building current modern day high voltage here in Copake was a hardware store 
uh, <laughs> predates the home center name, but it was a hardware store, home center, and lumber yard right here on a siding off of the railroad. Um, this is in the back. I'll go get you a shot up front. Here we are out front, and it's just a little short 10, 20 foot long piece of the original foundation from when this was a hardware store lumber yard. A blacktop parking lot. We are on the bed. There is the rock ledge that was carved out by the railroad. And as we turn our attention to the road, there she is. The Copake train station. I'm going to go say goodbye to my friends Dave and Steve times two. And I'm going to uh, shoot the train station. Stand by. Well, folks, that's Copake train station right there. And if you look real close, right up above those windows, you'll see little faded signboard marks where the sign Copake used to be. Yep. So from what I've been hearing, this has been recently purchased by either an individual or a group that could possibly have it slated for restoration. And it's very important, folks. Um, we have to save these buildings before they're gone. There are cameras on this property. I'm sure I'm being filmed right now as I'm filming it. Um, we might garner some attention. But I'm here and I don't have an opportunity to come back. So this might be the one and only time when I walk on the old rail bed without having garnered a thousand percent permission. But it's still there. Freight barn behind it. Let's walk on over and get the other side. Something really interesting on the other side. I am, by the way, uh, pursuing the owner or owners of this building to gain permission to quite possibly uh, do a small interview and get some inside shots of what it looks like right now. That is a caboose. <laughs> I use the term lightly. We'll see what it is. But anyway, there she is. Copake. Still standing. Thank goodness. Yep. Well, somebody mark out the ROW right of way right there. And there are cameras. Solar powered cameras. I'm impressed. We're walking along the road here. Ooh, that side doesn't look too good in the back. But I do believe they're working on it. You know what saved that building? That metal roof. Yeah. What do we got here? We got us a, a caboose of sorts. Yeah, you know, it might very well be. It sure does look like it. They put some T-111 over top of the steel siding there are some trucks well fenced in well protected well viewed on video camera anyway we'll uh we'll save this next chapter of this station for the next video how's that maybe we'll do a whole series on uh, the copic train station no promises but we'll try all right my trusty steeds sam the silver car awaits and we're moving on. 
That's the bed just east of Route 22, which is just east of the station right there through those brambles and branches and brush where we just came from. This is Route 22 here in Copake. So as you can see, uh, they've been maintaining and keeping this nicely mowed, potentially for future rail trail. And it does go off nicely. These lands are owned privately by a very nice wealthy gentleman who is really working to improve the property uh, for his own benefit and for those driving up and down Route 22 to enjoy it also. Look at this nice curve. That's a beautiful radius right there, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's Massachusetts mountains over there. And somebody's got a brush fire going. Cool. Well, I think I'll close my video here at the Depot Deli in Copake Falls, where you can not only get your organic maple syrup, your ice, you can also get your night crawlers. This is on the Harlem Valley Rail Trail, on the Harlem Valley line of the New York Central. And they've got it decorated quote unquote with some really nice old artifacts real deal stuff and um, they'll be opening up April 1st of this year 2022 and even though it's not on the Rhinebeck in Connecticut don't shoot me folks it's still I was this close to it when I was in Copake shooting the Copake station that I figured I better do a little segment right here. It's only a mile or two up the road. Well, so, I'll give you a little teaser. One of my next upcoming videos, I'm going to do Copake Falls and the Ironworks. I promise you. You can also get antiques and collectibles with your earthworms. So, the Harlem Railroad Harlem Valley, New York Central, now it's the Harlem Valley Rail Trail, and there it is. Until we meet again, I'll catch you. Keep remembering, be good, and they'll be good to you. Bye-bye.